discussions with the applicants in terms of this latest application. Um, sorry, but when we went to um, when we went to appeal, the uh, the inspector um, the inspector's comments um, basically shadowed you know, um, and commented along the lines of what I'd say, um, and they held the um, refusal. Um, as I say, I've had significant discussions with the applicants since um, since then, and. It's my view that reducing this to a single holiday let and providing the um, cutting into the barn it's, into the barn itself to provide some parking um, we, is likely to get away from the situation where people, drivers are going to have to park on the lane. And therefore, we get around this issue of vehicles not being able to turn around within the lane, and also um, the park vehicles will restrict the width of the lane. Which will have an impact on all the traffic as well. So, on balance, I feel that they have addressed the issues that, that um, are raised with the, with the original application and the issues that the inspector raised when um, she dealt with the appeal. Um, and I don't feel that there are sufficient grounds um, to refuse this application on highway safety. Again, through you, Chair, if I may, I know this area very well.
sufficiently um, okay to allow somebody who doesn't know the area at all to be let loose that area? Uh, through you, Chair, I, I, I do. Um, I was concerned previously with, with reversing the rules, um, but my view is that since they've altered that to allow vehicles to be able to turn around, um, that they will be able to exit the lane in forward gear. Um, so I think the safety aspect of it is, um, is dealt with um, in that regard. Yes. Thank you. 
how many of us go to the toilet in the garage door? Unless it's going to be a condition of the let, that whenever they drive the car into that area, they put the car in the garage, it's not going to get used. That garage will not be used by the holiday lets, and that isn't one of my concerns. All they'll do is end up shoving it outside the drive, whether they're getting suitcases in, whether they're getting goods and whatever, going out for hike or whatever. They won't do it from within the garage, and that is the part that concerns me. The garage is a provision which I accept has been made by the applicant in order to overcome that kind of problem. But in reality, is it going to be used? Not in my opinion. Okay, any other comments? The officer's recommendation is to approve. Is there anybody that wants to make a point to approve? Thank you, Chair. I don't have a form of words to be honest. And I, I, the only things I could think of are the ones that are contained within the original um, refusal, modified to take account of the fact, if you like, that the parking. I, I'm sorry, I haven't got a form of words. Apologies, I haven't got a form of words. So maybe we just go to the other. Okay, um, the officer's recommendation is to approve Denise. Approve that. Denise will move it. We have a second that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can we go to the vote? Those in favour? Next item that we're going to come to is agenda item 6 on page 21. Uh, Matthew, can we have a presentation please? Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. This application seeks permission for the erection of one detached dwelling on land adjacent to one border road in Heswell. The application has been submitted by SDA and a single objection from the occupier of 7 Chalkwell Drive has been received. Therefore, the application is required to be determined by the Planning Committee. The application site is a considerable size and it is proposed to site one detached two-storey dwelling adjacent to another one border road 
fronting onto Border Road. The south, uh, the side elevation facing the objector's property is located some six metres off the near side edge of Barnston Road and would be 38 metres from the rear elevation of 6 Chalkwell Drive. Therefore, the required separation distance of 14 metres is doubled. <laughs> In any case, windows at first floor on the east facing and west facing elevations will be obscurely glazed. These windows serve one upstairs landing, a dressing room, and a smaller secondary window to a bedroom. Any potential for overlooking is therefore minimised by obscure glazing and the significant distances achieved. The proposed dwelling is modern in appearance but would not detract from the visual amenities of the area as there, are mix, as there is a mix of house types and design with no one predominant design or style that could be said to define the characteristic of this part of Barnston Road. The proposal is accord with policy HS4 on new housing development and is therefore recommended for approval. There's no qualified condition for objection. Okay, uh, David. Yeah, thank you, Linda. Um, just got two comments to make, really. If you look at the location, which we haven't got at the moment on the plan, it would be healthy to just show it on the site if you can, where the house is located. The person who's objecting, would you believe, is on the opposite side of Charcoal Drive, and it's the rear of his property that faces uh, this the Charcoal Drive. So one can't imagine how he has come up with the reason that he needs to object to this particular application. It's across the road, for the sake. It's, it's probably about four and a half miles away. And, you know, the, the idea of, of, of an objection being sustained on those grounds, I think, quite frankly, is ludicrous. And it would help if we saw the plan of where this house is to show on the site and also just to demonstrate where seven, the rear of Seven Charcoal Drive actually overlooks, in inverted commas, this particular proposed development. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, this is the, uh, the, the proposed new dwelling, so it's forward at the site, uh, in line with the other properties on, um, on Border Road. Uh, the distance from here to here, uh, at, its, at its narrowest point, is six metres, so it's six metres to the near side edge of Barnston Road. Um, but if I just go back to the, um, the map, as you say, this is the property where the single objection has been received. And the distance from the rear elevation here to the gable elevation of the new property is 38 metres. Um, and the distance that you would normally expect to see where a principal elevation and uh, faces a gable elevation is 14 meters, so it is double. And on the other side? Yes, uh, on the opposite side of the past. Yeah. Are there any other comments? Okay, no? Okay, the officer's recommendation is to approve this application. Do we have a move up? Thank you, Susan. And second up. Sorry, who's second? Dave? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, can we go to the vote please? All those in favour? That's unanimous, that's carried. Okay. We're nearly there. <laughs> um, the next item is item 13, which is on page 73. There are, are amendments to notes on the late list in relation to additional conditions. Um, Matthew, you can go to presentation, please. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Permission is sought for the erection of a new four story commercial development comprising of open B1 office development together with associated parking, provision, and landscaping. The site is currently vacant, and the use of the proposed and the use for the proposed development is acceptable in principle, given the site's uh, location in a primarily industrial area. The site also forms part of the Mersey Waters Enterprise Zone, where the aim is to rejuvenate underused and surplus stockland and create new and permanent employment opportunities within the private and public sectors. The proposal would generate up to 450 full-time equivalent jobs for rural and contribute positively to the wider regeneration aspirations of, of the borough. The investment in this site will further support sustainable economic growth. The proposal is modern in design, uh, but is considered would sit well within its setting 
The use of glazing and other contemporary materials would provide a visually impressive gateway building at this location on the Dockburns waterfront. The proposals have been screened for environmental impact assessment and habitat regulations, and no adverse impact is considered to arise from these proposals being permitted. The significant and positive impact the development would bring in terms of economic regeneration and visual and environmental improvements of the site and the potential employment benefits to be had significantly weigh in favour of this proposal which is recommended for approval. Together with the additional conditions on the late list, uh, two further conditions are also proposed and followed following our habitats regulation screening. Um, they relate to no piling works on the site taking place between the 1st of January and the 28th of February in any given year. Um, that's in the um, interests of amenity and to ensure no adverse environmental impacts on uh, protected species and uh, the protected coastline. Um, and the second one is that all piling works to be undertaken using a soft start method of operation. Um, again, for similar reasons to condition 18 that is proposed. Uh, there is no petition on this application. There are any comments from the committee on this one? No petitions are Okay. Ma Matthew wants to show us the visuals because they are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> seeks to gain members' approval not to take enforcement against action uh, against material alterations to the appearance of an existing barn. Um, Matthew, can we have a presentation, please, with some visuals? Uh, through you, Chair. Um, a, a breach of planning control has taken place because uh, material alterations to the external appearance of a barn uh, have been carried out um, without first um, seeking to gain planning permission. Um, we consider that the, the, um, the alterations that have taken place actually result in an improved um, appearance to what was there previously. Um, and, and whilst we have invited the applicant to make an application uh, to remedy the, uh, the breach of planning control and regularise uh, the situation, um, to date, the applicant, uh, the, the owner of the property, has declined to, to submit such an application. So we've had to take a view as to whether or not um, it would be expedient to take action against that breach. And our view is that because the, um, the material alterations improve the appearance of the, of the barn, 
um, and don't harm the openness and character of the green belt, um, it would be expedient to take action against something that we would approve if, um, if an application was forthcoming. So our recommendation is to the committee um, not to take enforcement action um, and we're asking for the committee to support uh, that approach. Can we just have some visuals of that? On the, uh, on the visualizer um, because the case officer unfortunately had deleted her photos. Um, however, that's the bar as it was. If anybody can see that. Bring around. We need a one <laughs> received an application then we would have been able to control it uh, by requiring the, um, uh, the applicant to, to paint bar uh, an alternative colour. Uh, because we don't have an application, uh, we can't enforce it to be painted an alternative colour. So we are left with what we are, uh, with what we have. But we have taken a view that even that colour, and, and to be fair, those photographs probably make it look worse than it is. You can see it in situ in situ. As, it's not as bright as that. Um, um, but the, uh, the cladding that's been used is, is, is still an appropriate um, um, treatment for the bar. Okay, Paul. Like I said, I mean, I've only just briefly had a look at the colour. And the fact that it's, it's debated here tonight at the planning committee is surely evidence that there should be a planning application for us to consider. The officers obviously make the presumption, which is their, their professional job, if you like, in, in regards to whether or not they would approve it. But there's debate this evening as to whether that colour is appropriate. So surely we shouldn't be affording this, or well, it's not even an applicant, this person the special status to have that that thing approved when it's not even formed as part of an application for us. Why are we allowing it to get away with it, basically? There is a, a point which needs to be debated. I say we, we take enforcement action on it. Thank you, Chair. I've got to agree with everyone else, but when we look at this, the amount of times we've asked them to put planning permission in and so on, that they haven't bothered, so I sometimes wonder why we bother with planning. 
because at the end of the day, we're not going to go anywhere. Uh, we're, we're, we're just backing off. And I think at some time or other, the principle's got to be made that if we're asking for planning, we've got to go for planning. Phil? Um, I don't want to just that. I think what Kathy was getting at is if there is a further change to the bar in terms of 
to agenda item 17, pages 115 to 143. Planning application is decided on the delegates of powers between 6th of June and 13th of July. Are there any comments from members? Do members approve? Noting. Yeah. Okay, noting. Thank you. to agenda item 18, planning appeals decided between the 1st of April 2014 and the 30th of June 2014. We have six appeals allowed and eight appeals dismissed. Any comments from members? I think I'd just like to make one point that there was no costs were awarded in this particular case. <laughs> Thank you. As noted, there's your business, and I'll declare this meeting closed. Thank you.